I who immediately got what we were doing here and was so excited uh, uh, to be here. And we're so excited to have you, uh, George. So your talk is the ecology of open source and cloud native. Yes. Can you all hear me all right? Yeah. All right. How's mm -hmm. this? How much time do I have? I have 10 minutes, right? You have, well, you have, you have 15 minutes with questions. Oh, even better. Good. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm George. Before we get started here, I'm very excited to be here and very, feel very honored. I have so many thanks uh, for the people in this room that I already see. I've seen a lot of you through change logs, and I've known some of you, some of you for a very long time. So I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And I come here representing 13,000 Universal Blue people in Discord that are rocking and rolling. And I had to rewrite my presentation last night and again this morning due to all of the cool things that are happening around this. So um, who am I? Why are you here? You're probably thinking, why is someone from the CNCF here? Uh, you know, surely we're going to be talking about the Bootsy donation and all that kind of stuff. And while I do owe Neil and Brent a pound of flesh, um, I also have been involved with Bootsy relatively early and I, and I wanted to, I, I'm realizing now, I've waited four years for this talk, so let's go. Uh, I'm George Castro. Uh, I'm a technologist. Um, let's see. This is my first animation. Am I doing it right? There we go. Uh, I worked on Ubuntu cloud and server for about a decade uh, with some of you uh, that are in here. I've worked on Kubernetes. I've worked on Kubeflow and a, another open source tool named Cloud Custodian. All of these uh, these last three are currently in the CNCF, which is kind of nice. And um, uh, I'm an Army vet. I've worked at a university deploying Linux servers and workstations. That becomes important later on. I uh, worked at Canonical for a while there, uh, first on desktop -y stuff, and then later on on Ubuntu Cloud and Server and things like that. Ran into the Kubernetes co-founders and... Uh, hitched up with Heptio and ended up at VMware. And that was really my cloud native transformation. Uh, did VC for a little while after that and some startups, uh, burnt out, crashed hard, went on sabbatical for three months. And um, when I was doing that, I kind of thought hard about what I wanted my career to be. What's my legacy? You know, all that stuff that you read about in books. I had to do that. I don't like it. Um, so I went and I started a, a project that I'm going to talk to you about today that has nothing to do with the CNCF until the very end, which is really strange. Uh, I love heavy metal. I obviously love dinosaurs and old creatures. I'm the dinosaur guy in case you haven't heard. So I hope you're here to learn about dinosaurs. Um, and I also am a Linux enthusiast. Uh, I play bass and I'm learning, learning the drums. So today I'm going to talk about the model. Um, Colin, who... Uh, him and I met at the KubeCon in Detroit, and he had the spec for making Boot C what it is today with the whole OCI thing and everything. And I don't know how many of you read Colin's specs, but it took me a while to figure it out. Um, but after that meeting, we had breakfast, and I kind of realized what I needed to do. And uh, it became apparent to me that uh, this is it. This is the unifying model, and I am here to convince you uh, that this is the way, even though I, many of you probably already believe that. Um, because with cloud native, it's a very loaded term, right? But when I mean cloud native, I mean cloud, bare metal, server, I mean automotive, I mean desktop, I mean everything, right? And the Bootsy model allows us to use the same common language for everything. And I love this to, to my inner nerd core, right? One of the best things I love about when Nick's people look at our stuff is they go, this isn't really that impressive. It's just Bash and Python. And I say, yes, yes, it is. I don't think they get that joke, but. Um, so I started this thing called Universal Blue. I, uh, after Colin, I had to go to reInvent where I got COVID, uh, but I was really excited about, about the technology. So I was in my basement because I was isolated and I helped build this thing. Uh, I've had this fix me script, uh, that I was carrying around with me for years that takes silver blue and makes it exactly the way I like it. And if everything that Colin was telling me was correct, I should be able to just shove that in a container file and then put Podman in a for loop and an operating system should come out. And that's exactly what happened. Fundamentally, Universal Blue, Bazite, Bluefin, Ucore, all this stuff is literally Podman in a for loop. So I try not to overcomplicate it, but these do give us certain properties that are very, um, they feel very product-like. So I didn't want to make another distro. I had done that for 10 years. 
I didn't want to do packaging. I understand the difficulties of what it is to make a distribution. I never want to do that again. And now that I'm in cloud, I tend to be kind of more distroless these days. And I knew that this would fire off on server, right? But the desktop was interesting to me because if, if Colin is right, then the desktop should be able to come out just as good as the server does, right? And I know a lot of people are going to do the server stuff. Um, you know, I, I was trying to scratch a different itch. So, um, you know, especially on the right hardware, something like a framework. And I wanted to start from scratch. I had a call with, after we started making this and made progress, I had a call with uh, Matthew Miller, uh, the Fedora project leader. And he looked at me and he showed me the count me stats. He goes, George, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but uh, no one's using silver blue. And, you know, and uh, there's two ways I could have dealt with that was been sad and go home or like a cloud native person does to see, we'll see about that, right? I have numbers to increase. So uh, that's what I did. And um, we have this. So I made the base images. I made my perfect little desktop, showed it to someone. And they said the first thing you'd expect a Linux nerd to use. I don't use GNOME, I use KDE. Uh, so we had to go back, make base images, you know, split out config from the service unit, you know, all the stuff that you gotta do when you're making an app container. We had to do it again, except this time there's a kernel in that container. However, something really strange happened. We're on year four of Universal Blue, and about a year ago, a chap named Kyle grabbed our base images and grabbed some of Valve's open source code, slapped it in. I literally mean slapped it in there. Some of you have looked at, at some of our code and made a thing called Bazite, which is an operating system for gamers. And what's very interesting is there's this device called the Steam Deck. That's the one on the top left. And it is an entirely new class of devices. And it ships with Linux. And Valve spent a lot of money and about a decade making Windows games run great on Linux. And there are people in this room, I'm pretty sure, who have them or have helped with this um, or whatever. So there's this entire new market. And when there's a new market, open source can always get there first. So Kyle was able to figure out how to basically clone SteamOS but with Fedora, right? And this unlocked a few things. First of all, as the Steam Deck came out, they have competitors from other hardware vendors. And many of them were shipping Windows in this kind of cribbed experience. And it just wasn't as nice as, as SteamOS is. But SteamOS had a, had a few problems. First of all, it's controlled by one vendor. I can't just put it on anything. Whereas Fedora is an open source project that we can mold to our exact specifications, especially with a container file. So this came out, and in the past few weeks, this has really, really blown up. In fact, I am terrified. As YouTubers started to find this, look at some of the views in these videos, over 100,000 views on some of these. I cannot tell you what, how awesome it is to be on Digital Foundry, which is like a PC gaming nerds, and they go and they measure every single frame and millimeter of latency on that thing, all the good stuff that you want to see. So we went from relative obscurity to skipping most Linux uh, content channels and just going right, just going right for the top there. And um, I, I came back to Matt and said, hey, I refreshed the count me data. Um, and here it is. So this top line is Bazite. Uh, the, and, and the next two are both silver blue and Kinoite, which are Fedora. I want you to note how there's a spike in silver blue and Kinoite as well. I was concerned that we were going to be competing with fedora um but i don't want to compete for, i don't want to make a better fedora we wanted to move a needle we, i wanted to put it someplace where it's never been before um so we have thirteen thousand users in discord we made contributions to flat pack if um flat hub if you use vert manager in in flat hub that was one of our contributors working with timothy ravier to get that kimu extension in there so now you can run vert manager on your system Keep the host clean. That's what I'm talking about. That nice, clean cloud native stuff. Uh, we've contributed to Fedora. Kyle is now a Fedora contributor. And the big one, Kyle got in kernel contributions. Three of our folks have gotten their stuff in the Linux kernel. Um, and we're made up of gamers and people like us, which is a strange mix. You've got this excited, I call them the kids, uh, that really want to have that enthusiast attitude. And then we have us, right? And then we have Nirav Patel, who's this the CEO of Framework Laptops. This is what he announced yesterday. They are making a machine, and here it is there on the right. You can barely see it. 
Um, and they're shipping it with nothing because it's a DIY. Uh, you install your own OS. And these two logos are very interesting because the one on the left is Bazite. That's us. That's Universal Blue. That's community driven. The one on the right is Playtron, which is a commercial company, which is also based on Bootsy. What a coincidence. This machine is very interesting. This is one of the first AMD Strix Halo machines. It is an APU, and the RAM is actually soldered on, which everyone's like, oh. Um, but then you realize it has to be soldered on for the bandwidth that it takes because you can address up to 110 gigs of VRAM through this machine, through that APU. This is not a dedicated GPU. And it, the 128 gig model starts at two grand. They announced it yesterday. I had no idea this was coming. But they invited Kyle, and here he is at the booth. It runs games. It runs Lam Rama Lama, sort of. I will get to that in a little bit. So this is Bazite. It's really exploding. It's it's reaching a new audience. And there comes a time when you do an open source project when you realize it's not about you. This is Bluefin. It's productized silver blue. It comes with Podman, Podman Desktop, Docker, VS Code, the dev container extensions with the remote SSH uh, extension. We include homebrew. We include Rama Lama. We just switched over to Rama Lama. We used to ship Olama with a quadlet. Uh, but as I think as you play with Rama Lama, you start to realize that it is the podman for AI. And it is it is what I've been waiting for. I was very skeptical at first. So uh, I'm definitely loving the way that goes. And I find this interesting because in open source and Fedora, you see people being cynical about AI and, and all of these kinds of things. And meanwhile, my users are like, give me more. Um, so what is next for us? Uh, we recently started to make CentOS builds. I'd like to thank Carl George, who's really been helping us with here, uh, with this. We're going to make a Bluefin LTS, we call it. And Bluefin GDX, which is an ARM build with CUDA and all the NVIDIA stuff. Um, Dave Neary called me from Ampere. He said, I have a 128 core machine coming to scale. I need a demo. Uh, so we are working actually right now on that. We're going to figure out our uh, supply chain security. I have things to announce that are currently NDA'd. Um, really looking to get rid of OS tree and just go pure Bootsy here for, for that uh, end user use case. And I also want to reshape the relationship between enthusiasts and commercial companies. I think I'm used to this kind of cloud native approach where you have a vendor like Red Hat, right? And then you you kind of figure out what needs to happen and working with our upstream hats when we're working on that is difficult with enthusiasts because they don't see what we do every day. So that is something that I'm really working on. Uh, you know, so, sometimes I get a cynical take about, you know, how could you trust evil Red Hat with, with your favorite open source project, you know? And I'm sitting there thinking I just got millions of dollars worth of engineering for free. So, you know, um, maybe I like it. So what I really want to do this year, though, is I want to get our story straight with AI. No one's really explaining this to me in a way that makes sense to me. Um, because I feel the AI, and if you look at Rama, like when you use Rama Lama, it feels like an extension of Podman sometimes, right? So AI to me has become an extension of cloud native. Um, so AI implies cloud native, right? They're, people are training these things. I, I just found out Granite was trained on Kubeflow. I didn't even know that. Um, so AI kind of implies cloud native and, and cloud native implies Linux. So I, I see it all together in that singular language. Um, I definitely have a lot of people to thank here in this room, um, but I'm also gonna take the time to tell you what I'm waiting for. Uh, Z standard chunked, of course, I think everyone knows about this. Uh, getting getting those uh, sizes down will be great. Really, really love Bib right now. Um, we're just waiting on uh, two pull requests. I'd like to thank uh, Owen Taylor and Sebastian Wick who have those in progress. That lets us put those flat packs on that ISO to give people that super nice experience. We are planning on donating a GitHub action for Bib to the upstream project, you, you, it's it's beautiful. You can, you can grab someone's GitHub repo and start spinning out ISOs in about 10 minutes, 30 lines of, of YAML config, it's really nice. Um, the installation experience on portable devices is actually very different because uh, if you have a portable device, you have to have like a software keyboard in the installer, you know? Um, so that's, that's one approach. Another approach Antheus is taking is you know, what if we could just boot C install blasted disk uh, right from that Windows image? So we're definitely investigating things like that. Um, and enterprises, users versus enthusiasts, we have 
kind of the traditional Linux nerds, uh, one of the things we love is we're a greenfield deployment, so we don't have anybody to upset. Uh, so we kind of just tell people what to do. So when people show up and they say, I don't like flat packs and containers, it's like, cool, good luck. Um, so that makes it really easy for us to move fast and not care what people think because it's it's amazing. A lot of these new users have never ever used Linux before. So they don't have any uh, preconceptions on what it's supposed to be. And a lot of people hold it wrong, right? I get a lot of questions that are like, I, I wish Bootsy did these like 50 things and then they list off all of the horrible things of operating systems we've been trying to get rid of for 20 years. So there definitely is that cultural uh, effect happening there. Oh my God, how am I on time? You've um, got one minute left. Oh my goodness. Um, so the pitch is going to be, everyone's seen this, right? I want you all to remember that that huge block is Kubernetes. We need bodies. Ava Black said this. We're not just longer software engineers. We have to be mentors. We have to invest in these kids. We have to understand the ecology. And that is what I am investing in. Um, this is someone's Bazite computer. It is a, 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 the contributor's 10-year-old daughter made this. Um, Unlimited potential. I know many of you work in infrastructure. You, you might not have any idea why George cares about the Linux desktop. Um, and we are, we are trying to teach them correctly with containers and all of the stuff that they need to do. Um, we optimize for the 96% is what we say. Um, and with that, oh, there it is. Did I say that again? Um, come see me at scale. I'll be demoing this stuff on framework laptops, that Ampere workstation. I've got all the goodies. Uh, the Rama Llama demo is going to be awesome. There's a thing I just found out about called Llama Stack. I guess y'all are into. Sure, man. I'll I'll, I'll ship it. <laughs> so with that, uh, anyone have any questions? I know I used up all the time, Michelle. I'm sorry. You did. You did. <laughs> it's okay though. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for that really great talk. Um, yeah, and I love the dinosaurs as well. <laughs> <laughs>